a battle over ballots in Bear County. After 20 years, the first step in who will follow Nelson Wolf as Bear County judge has been taken. I'll look at the tight race among Democrats in a moment. But first, an FBI raid shook up the race for U.S. District 28. Democrat Henry Cuellar is trying to keep the seat that he's held since 2005. Now he has denied any wrongdoing after agents raided his home back in January. But could that controversy keep him off of the November ballot? Let's take a look at the results tonight. Two women trying to unseat the incumbent. The numbers they've been changing throughout the evening. Right now, Jessica Cisneros leading with 50% of the votes. Incumbent Henry Cuellar with 45% of the vote right now. About roughly 1,000 votes separate the two candidates. But as we said, results are still being counted. Only 40% reporting right now. This district covers parts of San Antonio, stretches to Laredo as far south as the Rio Grande Valley. The night team's Alicia Barrero, Barrera is in Laredo. She joins us live tonight. Alicia. Well, that small margin that you were talking about was enough to get this crowd here at Jesse Cusisneros' watch party up, going, clapping. Let me tell you, she still hasn't made it here tonight. We know that she's with her family right now watching those same results. On Henry Cuellar's part, we have reached out several times leading up to this race. He has still not made himself available to media. We did ask for a statement, at least to know how tonight's going, his reaction to all of that. But again, no watch party for his team. Here in Laredo for Jessica Cisneros, it's a little different. A lot of um, happy faces, some cheers, some hugs. But really, the team hopeful that their work was enough. They were canvassing up to the very last minute from all parts of Laredo here. So at any moment, we know that Jessica Cisneros could make it here. Again, her team right now very hopeful. They're thankful for all the support. I also want to talk about the money that was raised for this race. According to the Federal Election Committee, Henry Cuellar was able to raise almost $2 million. Jessica Cisneros, she was she was able to raise a little bit more than $1.5 million. Again, this is according to the Federal Election Committee. But yet her numbers as of right now, it is still early, but her numbers are better. Are they looking stronger than they are for Cuellar? So again, a young night, but we know that this district is one that Republicans want to flip. So whoever, whichever Democrat wins tonight, they're going to try to hold on to that seat, try to keep District 28, Congressional District, blue. Myra, Steve, back to you. All right, one of the races to watch tonight. Thank you, Alicia. Let's take a look at the Republican ballot for U.S. District 28. Cassie Garcia with 30 percent of the vote endorsed by Senator Ted Cruz. Also in this race, we have Sandra Witten with 16 percent of the vote and Cabrera with 12 percent. After 20 years, there is a new battle in Bear County. Judge Nelson Wolf retiring the county seat and several Democrats hoping to fill it as judge and there was a potential for a runoff among Democrats in this race right now. Judge Peter Sakai and state representative Ina Minjadas are taking the top two spots. Sakai has 43% of the vote hasn't moved a lot since the first numbers were out there. Ina Minjadas with 30% of the vote, but so far no one has reached that 50% to avoid a runoff. The night team's Garrett Berger following this race for us tonight. He joins us live from Acadiana Cafe on the west side. Garrett. Well, we're over at State Representative Ina Minjadas' watch party where things have died down, as you can see. But this primary looks like it's just getting heated up. Minjadas told us that she expected that this would end in a runoff. She's happy with tonight's result. Now she, it looks like she's going to be going head-to-head -head with former district court judge Peter Sakai. Now, we saw Sakai get a warm welcome at his own watch party earlier tonight, where he hoped Election Day results might push him over the top, over 50 percent, and help him win outright. So far, that hasn't happened, and both sides appear to be gearing up for a runoff, each candidate touting their experience as reason for why they're the better choice. Sakai as a former district judge and Minaras as a state representative. You got a uh, candidate that's got 26 years as a district court judge that created innovative programs, family drug court, early childhood court. We created a college-bound docket for foster kids getting into college. I was uh, the one Bear County member that was uh, put on appropriations, which dealt with a $200 billion plus budget for the state of Texas, and that's going to be very key for the next Bear County judge. One of the most important responsibilities is going to be that county budget. 
Of the four Democratic candidates, these were probably the two best known having held office. Still, Minharis believes Sakai had the edge in countywide recognition, which she says spurred her to campaign aggressively starting back in November. Now, their runoff's not going to take place until May 24th, so it's almost going to be nearly three months before we know who the Democratic nominee will be for county judge. Live on the West Side, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Garrett. Now, two Republican candidates running for Bear County judge. Former Bear County Commissioner Trish DeBerry. This one went really as expected, grabbing 65% of the vote among Republicans. Looks as though she will win this and avoid any runoff. The race for Bear County judge having a domino effect, really. State District 124 covers parts of West Bear County. That seat was left open when Ina Minjadas left the post to run for judge. Three Democrats facing off in the race for State District 124. Let's look at the results right now. 69% of the vote for Josie Garcia tonight. She has never held public office before. The night team's Courtney Friedman following this race. She joins us from Garcia's watch party. Courtney, they have to be pretty happy out there, I'm guessing. Yeah, we've been here multiple times today, and there is some big time energy. <laughs> in here, lots of smiles and a candidate who said she expected to be on top, but not by this much. And of course, there are a lot of numbers still to come in and we're watching those closely. But right now her team is excited and they have a reason to be. Josie Garcia is an Air Force combat veteran, a mother of eight and helps lead a grassroots group of political activists who spent the last legislative session in Austin advocating for police reform. That's one of her main goals and a big part of her campaign platform, along with fixing a broken foster care system and supporting families with disabled children, all goals that now seem a little closer to achieving. It just really goes to show the hard work and dedication that um, my campaign put in and, and that we, we did block walking, good old fashioned community outreach work. And hopefully in November, I will be the Texas State um, Representative for House District 124. Yeah, so this excitement is very valid. District 124 usually leans, historically leans towards the Democrats, so that is a big leg up. If she is the one to go up against the Republican uh, Arredondo, Johnny Arredondo, who is running unopposed in this primary. So a long way to go tonight, but for now, lots to be celebrating. Right now, we're live from the Southwest Side. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Courtney. Now, she just mentioned it. There is only one Republican candidate for State District 124, Johnny Arredondo, running unopposed in his primary. He will face the winner of the Democratic Party contest in November. Let's turn now to the race for Texas governor. Governor Greg Abbott facing off with seven other Republicans to defend his seat. It appears he's taken an overwhelming lead, just as analysts predicted. As a matter of fact, you can see he has been declared the winner tonight with 68% of the vote. Alan West and Don Huffines behind him. And the Democratic race for governor, former congressman, senatorial and presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke faced off with four other candidates. He's also, as expected, been declared the winner tonight with 92% of the Democratic vote. Moving on now to the race for Texas Attorney General, incumbent Republican Ken Paxton facing legal troubles of his own as he tries to defend this seat. Several other Republicans trying to move in on that seat tonight. Incumbent Ken Paxton, let's take a look at these numbers here. 42% of the vote. George P. Bush, who is current, the current land commissioner, grandson of George H.W. Bush, coming in second place so far here, 22% of the vote. An important note tonight, we are learning that Harris County is having some problems with tabulating results there. That county is one of the biggest in the country, of course, in Texas, so numbers still to watch. Now for a look at the Democratic ballot for Attorney General Rochelle Garza with 42% of the vote right now. She was a former attorney with the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU. The former mayor of Galveston, Joe Jaworski, has 21% of the vote tonight. Now, still lots more election coverage ahead, as well as that developing situation in Ukraine. We are all watching, and tonight's State of the Union. And he served San Antonio City Council. The commissioner's court for Bexar County was the state rep for District 122. Now. 
Republican Lyle Larson is deciding to leave office. Several other Republicans hoping to win tonight's nomination to face off with the lone Democrat. The race for District 122 next on the night beat. Welcome back to election night coverage. A state representative from San Antonio giving up his seat. Republican state rep Lyle Larson following through with his support for term limits. Yeah, Republicans now hope to keep State District 122 in the red category. The district covers much of the northern part of Bear County. Let's take a look at the results on the Republican side of this race. Right now, former San Antonio City Council member Alyssa Chan with 39% of the vote. Former Bear County Republican Party Chairman Mark DeRazio coming in with 27 percent of the vote. So it appears there was going to be a runoff in this race. The night team's Dylan Collier live at Chan's watch party with how the night played out there, Dylan. And Chan addressed her supporters about 45 minutes ago, said she was in good shape and likely headed to a two-person runoff in late May. Chan said her messaging on big issues struck a chord in this conservative district, and the voting numbers so far back that up. Barring a comeback from Adam Blanchard late tonight, the other candidate in the Republican runoff will be Mark DeRazio, the one-time chairman of the Bear County Republican Party, had about a 5% gap for that second spot at last check. His goal hang on the rest of the night. I'm just going to expect the unexpected. So, if, you know, if we, if we can maintain this 5% or even increase that, I'll be, I'll be happy with that. So the, the thing in this race is to get into the runoff. I think uh, my issues really resonate to the voters. I think people are really concerned about the safety, about the border security, but also property taxes is getting so high. And I have a plan, as you know, to cut the property taxes 25%. I think that resonated well. But I think my personal story also, you know, it's uh, some some people feel like uh, it's uh, it, it touches them. Chan did extremely well in the early voting and in the votes that have been tabulated from today so far, especially when you consider that this was a four person race without an incumbent in that race. The winner of the May 24th runoff faces Democrat Angie Aramburu in the November election. Reporting live at La Quintera, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Dylan. And as he mentioned, there is only one Democratic candidate for State District 122. Angie Aramburu running unopposed in her primary. She will face the winner of the Republican contest in November. A U.S. district changing hands after lawmakers redo, redrew district lines. Longtime U.S. Representative Lloyd Doggett decided to run in a separate district. That leaves the seat for U.S. District 35 open. That district Kind of a strange looking one as you look at it. It runs from parts of San Antonio along the I-35 corridor all the way to Austin. One of the Democratic candidates hoping to fill that seat, former Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran. Let's take a look at the results in the Democratic race so far. Greg Kassar has had a huge lead since early voting came out. He's continuing to hold on to that with 62% of the vote, followed by Eddie Rodriguez and former San Antonio Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran. It looks as if he will avoid a runoff for a look at the Republican race for U.S. District 35. Dan McQueen currently has 21 percent of the vote and those votes continue to be counted tonight. There appears to have been an election day boost in voters in Bear County. Election officials will tally up those final votes over the next few days before declaring this vote is official. But tonight they are glad they reached their goal of seeing more than 65,000 voters on Election Day. The night team's Patty Santos with the latest from the Bear County Elections Office. Patty. Yeah, we're inside the elections office and right behind me is where those votes are coming in. These are the workers that are going to certify those votes. And also we know that there's some um, um, poll watchers that are keeping tabs on what's going on. At last check, there was about 101 precincts that have been reported out of 279. So it's still going to be a long time before we get the final results. Um, but there were people waiting in line way past seven o'clock because remember, if you were in line by seven, then you got to vote today. Uh, but that boost in the end really surprised uh, everyone. The goal was to get to about 65 to 80,000 voters the day of 72,000 voters plus turned out today. We try and do our projections and we look at it 
And so going into this, it was going to be 65 to 80. So I'm really glad we climbed over that 65. And the hope is that uh, voters carry that enthusiasm as we head into November. Steve, Myra. Thank you, Patty. We're still tracking the results from tonight's elections. Yeah, you will continue to see the results scrolling across the bottom of your screen there. But now we want to move on to some other stories that we are tracking here tonight. Breaking news coming out of Ukraine. Tonight we are learning more than 350 people have now been killed. Another 1,600 or more injured. All this while the Kremlin continues to carry out attacks in Ukraine's second largest city. And as the Russian military convoy advances toward Kyiv, Ukrainian citizens and soldiers are preparing to defend their country. About 700,000 people have now fled to neighboring borders but that number is expected to climb dramatically. Most of those refugees, women and children. Russia, just one of the topics in tonight's State of the Union address. President Joe Biden announcing he is closing off American airspace to all Russian flights. He also says gas prices will be going down with more than 30 countries agreeing to release 60 million barrels of oil from strategic reserves. And he no longer wants to rely on foreign countries for resources and urges Congress to pass the Bipartisan Innovation Act. That means make more cars and semiconductors in America, more infrastructure and innovation in America, more goods moving faster and cheaper in America, more jobs where you can earn a good living in America. Republicans sharing their own thoughts on tonight's address. But we shouldn't ignore what happened in the run up to Putin's invasion waiving sanctions on Russian pipelines while eliminating oil production here at home. The President Biden also spoke about cutting energy costs, child care costs and prescription costs. As for COVID-19, he says starting next week, Americans can request a second round of at home COVID tests at covidtest.gov. You can read more on our website, ksat.com. Let's take a look with live cam, a unique look tonight because this is again a live look inside the Bear County Elections Office downtown. Those results from tonight's races still coming in, still being tabulated. Some of these are close races headed to a runoff, so a lot of work left to do here tonight. Meanwhile, Adam Kasky tracking a pretty nice forecast for us. Yeah, nice few days ahead of us and increasing humidity. That's going to lead to a little bit of dampness in the days ahead. Before we get to anything, I want to let you know we've got a new member of our pollen count. First time so far this season, oak has made it into the pollen count. It's that time of year. Once we get past mountain cedar, oak quickly creeps up on us and it's the first time that it's been indicated in the slide and it's low at 10. But I want to point out that oak season usually starts to ramp up about now and then peaks in early April before tapering off and basically being done with as we get into May 33 this morning. That's well below the average of 48 this afternoon and made it up to 72. Just a few degrees above average there. Hondo now 44, Bulverde 50. Comfort 51, Stinson 57, a mixture of 40s and 50s out there, but Del Rio still hanging on to 62. Dew points right now, teens and 20s, so a lack of any mugginess in the air, still very dry air in place. That's going to be changing in the days ahead. A gradual increase in our humidity will give us some noticeable mugginess by the weekend, but also Starting Thursday morning, it'll kickstart a trend of low fog and drizzle, basically morning fog and drizzle and just a nuisance dampness to start every day from Thursday all the way through Sunday. As for real moisture, we just unfortunately don't have any real showers out there right now. A weak disturbance over Tucson that's been throwing some mid level clouds toward us and especially folks in West Texas, but that's about it. A stronger system moving into the Pacific Northwest stream of moisture there. I wish we could tap into it, but unfortunately our rain chances are pretty slim right now. We'll just have that nuisance moisture by Thursday morning and then every morning through the weekend 40 tomorrow morning. A lot of sunshine by the afternoon mid 70s. We're talking 75 Uvalde up to 77 in Catula. It's about 74 in San Antonio. Then you look ahead and we'll be back to the lower 80s by Saturday and Sunday, but those morning temperatures will be on the rise back in the 60s for those morning readings by Saturday and Sunday. Just slight rain chances Sunday and Monday and Tuesday.
All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. Should Cowboy fans be concerned about their quarterback, Greg? Yeah, because it was revealed today. We didn't know about this. Revealed today he had surgery. The question is, will it keep him out of any of the offseason workout programs? And where did he have the surgery? When we come back, we'll let you know about Dak Prescott and the high school basketball playoffs. We are all over the place. Coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys star quarterback Dak Prescott recovering from surgery on his non-throwing shoulder. That was revealed today by head coach Mike McCarthy. McCarthy confirmed it was on his left shoulder. Should not affect Prescott's availability for their offseason program. McCarthy added that the injury was an irritant to Prescott during last season, but does not believe it impacted the quarterback's play. Some may argue that point since Prescott played differently than what he did in the first six games of the season, where he looked invincible, setting a franchise record with 37 touchdown passes after missing only one game with a calf injury. Now that Bruce Bowen has helped the Spurs win three of their five NBA championships to go along with eight all-defensive teams and having his number 12 retired to the Raptors at the AT&T Center, now he's trying to get the TMI Panthers a state championship as their head coach. Panthers have made it all the way to the Taps 5A state semifinals where they will face Conroe, the Woodlands Christian. I'm thrilled that our kids have this opportunity to be recognized as, you know, one of the top teams in the state. This has been... I mean, a moment I've been waiting for for four years since I've been playing varsity. I haven't had a state run yet, uh, ever. So in this upcoming game, you know, got, got a lot to win for. All right, game time for TMI on Friday at Robinson High School in Waco is set for noon. High school basketball playoff games tonight. Next. Let's start our coverage of the high school boys basketball area playoffs at Clark versus Westlake in San Marcos in Class 6A. First quarter, Jordan Mason bringing the ball off the court, making his way through the defense to get to the hoop for the bucket to tie the game at 12. Final seconds before the half, the Cougars force a turnover. Ethan Crowley comes up with it, scores just before the buzzer to keep things close, but the Chaparrales pull away in the second half. Connor McManus for the three. This is good, and the Cougars' run comes to an end. Westlake moves on 47-38. Class 5A, third round now at Littleton Gym. Bernie Champion taking on Buta Johnson. Chargers wasting no time taking control of this one. Second quarter, Jesse Pert spins, drives, banks it in off the glass to make it 25-14 champion. Then a few plays later, off the miss, Braden Baum skies for the rebound. The putback champion goes on to win it. 61-56 in the class 4A ranks. Bernie taking on Pleasant and Paul Taylor Fieldhouse. Greyhounds trail 24-10 early in the second quarter, but they start the comeback trail here. Off the miss, Devin Styles gets a rebound, flips it up and in. Counted and won. He'd hit the free throw to cut a lead down to nine. Then in the final seconds of the half, Barrett Pate picks off the pass at mid court starts the break Preston Thompson finds Houston Hendricks for the lay in Greyhounds on a 10-0 run cut that lead down to fourth the break they come from behind to win it 43-40 in class three a defending state champion Cole taking on Blanco Panthers trying to battle back early in the third quarter Connor Chase drives inside draws contact gets it to fall count it and one Blanco opens up a 5-0 run to cut the lead down to 16 but the Cougars answer right back side is Livingston with a pretty up and under lay and makes it a 20 point game and then Andre Ray adds the exclamation point finishing a steal with a one-handed jam Cole cruises 78-41. We'll have more on KSAT.com. And thanks to Andrew Seeley for running all over the place tonight. To get those highlights. You did a great yeah. job. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. We are keeping track of all the election results online at KSAT.com. Just click on this article on the homepage. You can scroll through the list of races. This will be updated with the latest results as they continue to come in tonight. And, of course, tune in to Good Morning San Antonio for continuing coverage on tonight's election. Near 40 degrees tomorrow morning, then sunny and mid 70s into the afternoon and afternoon temperatures aren't going to change a whole lot. We'll be low 80s by this weekend, but morning temperatures and nighttime temperatures will be on the rise and we'll start our days in the lower to mid 60s this weekend. Rain chances, just 20% chance of a stray shower or storm on Sunday, then 30% with a weak cold front on Monday, which will reset temperatures a little bit. Thank you, Adam. That does it for the night. Don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts at 4.30. Have a great night.